this is especially a media narrative that still see India in terms of an emerging superpower that has now for many years measured the self-worth of urban Indians in terms of the numbers of billionaires and millionaires who make it, for example, to the Forbes lists. Uh, this is a book that is a staggering and a disturbing reality check. And it's a disturbing reality check because I think I would be the first to admit as a journalist that some parts of this country have perhaps just seceded from the rest of the country. And we occupy this little bubble, and I think that's the bubble that the book is actually bursting and saying that the rest of India lives beyond. And I want to start uh, by asking you, Amartya, about a line that stayed with me. It's in the opening of the book, where you said that the growth process is so biased that India today looks like islands of California in a sea of sub-Saharan Africa. Now, the question is that if it is that stark, then why is it that all the talk is really about the islands of California and very little about sub-Saharan Africa? Well, mostly because Californians write it, and it's much easier. I mean, there are, and, and there are a lot of things to say. Islands of California is quite you know, hundreds of millions uh, you can deal with. There's a huge culture which, of which, uh, you know, we have been, uh, ben you benefit, I benefit. Yeah. Rome might not like to admit it, but he does benefit too. <laughs> it consists of good literature, good theater, good film, uh, good cultural activities, uh, music, uh, dancing. So uh, it's easy to get lost in California no, no, and well, forget about well, because the reality There are things to write. And the islands of California may be about 25 times the size of Denmark. Yeah. Now, lots of things are written about Danes, and there's no reason why it not can't be written. No, I think it's not so much why so much is written about Denmark, and this is the way I would say. I don't resent it, and I read them with great interest. But it's just that I would like other things to be written too. Yes. It's what is not written that I'm grumbling about. But you're right to ask the question. And we did ask ourselves that, saying, how could we explain that? And I think, um, and, uh, you know, there's lots of interesting things to say about California. I think we quoted uh, my student, uh, Anand Gedhadas's book, uh, India Calling. Uh, because it is a, a very interesting book yeah. about the, the Indians going abroad and finding nothing in the country, and now coming back because yeah. they can find more in the country than they can find in the United States. That's part of the story, too. And that's a part of the success story. I have got nothing against the island of California. But I would like the California to be a bigger part of India and indeed cover all of the country. Yeah. It's that way. Well, not the Californian healthcare, I might say, because, <laughs> <laughs> because it's part of the United States. That's a problem. But uh, in general, I, I would say that... Um, we are very much in favor of prosperity, but prosperity for all. And, and, and that's really where the issue is. So I'm delighted you asked the question. I don't know whether the role stake no, is different. Actually, I was a little apprehensive about that sentence myself when you were writing the preface. Why? Because, it's, it's, because, it's a standout uh, sentence. Do you, do you that, think it's an oversimplification? Well, it can, be read. it can be read in a simplistic manner. And I expected that the media would pick on that line, and I am <laughs> vindicated. It's but, a good line. But, but I, I think that it's, I, it's I a think, good line. I think no, it says a lot. Well, I, I will not it. accept that <laughs> that uh, that work I read it in a simplistic manner. No, I, I think she asked the right question, which indicates so, I was so, right in insisting so. and putting that sentence in. I agree. I, I agree with that. I think the way it has been clarified, I entirely agree with. So I'm not saying we should have taken it out. Uh, I think that um, the reason why it may be simplistically read is that it's not like there's a... Firstly, it's not like there's a boundary between the islands and then the ocean around it. I mean, it's not like that. Um, and I think it's also important to be clear about what's, you know, the very special nature of the inequalities in India. It's not, it's not just a statement about the inequalities of income. I think in India, of course, there are inequalities of incomes that are very important. There are also enormous inequalities of other kinds, especially of caste, of gender, of education, all compounding each other yes. and creating ex extreme social distance between the privileged and the rest. I think that's what's really quite uh, special about India. And the other part is that uh, there is these huge numbers of people who are deprived of, ba of the basic necessities. And uh, you know, a certain gap of income 
could mean something socially if it's at a certain level such that even those at the bottom still have some basics. I, but when it is, as in India, implying that those at the bottom are living in conditions that are so inhuman and so unacceptable, it has a greater outrageousness. And so I think we have to... So, so, uh, so <laughs> that analogy actually is ultimately appropriate.